First off, my heart goes out to you and Tom. I'm sorry for your loss. Losing a partner, the love of your life, is probably the hardest thing anybody can endure. You're right, it could happen to any of us. I hope that when I'm fortunate enough to find my partner someday, that we're able to live happily in a world where people aren't threatened by us or don't look at us as though we're slime or scum of the earth or in the redneck term like my father thinks creatures that need to be purged I thought I'd come on here and share my story I grew up in the Texas Panhandle another part of the Bible Belt and my life was hard because as I grew up I began to realize that I had feelings for other guys you know friends that I had experimented with in my early teens and prior to grew to spread rumors and hatred towards me as they realized obviously that they were meant to be with the opposite sex I was so horrified by it. I mean, I'd always been bullied because of my weight. And it wasn't until middle school that people began to accuse me of being gay. And I didn't want to believe it. I didn't want to cope with the fact that I was like that. When I was 14, I attempted to take my father's pistol and put it to my own mouth, cocked it, took the safety off, and almost pulled the trigger. Had I done that, I wouldn't be here right now. I wouldn't still be fighting for what I believe in. I learned to take what they said about me. Yes, it hurt. Yes, it made me cry at night sometimes. But I grew from it. I've since learned to become a cynic, and I never let what people say about me affect me, at least in visible ways. So as I've grown older, it stopped. When I entered high school, things got a lot worse. I was still hiding behind the facade that I was straight. Dated several women, and finally dated one that I had actually developed feelings for. Feelings that I couldn't follow through on because I knew that if we had become intimate, it just wouldn't work. So I was forced to do two things. After a lengthy discussion with my mother and my grandmother over the phone, who gave me their support and made me realize that I was gay, I went to school and came out to her first and then apologized because I knew it would break her heart. It not only broke her heart, but she turned around to spread hatred towards me. Her parents reacted even worse. They also began to preach their own hatred of me. Her father was a pastor once, and he went to his church and told them they needed to pray for me because I was going to hell. Her mother, on the other hand, approached me and told me I can't believe it. You looked so good together. But her brother came up to me and thanked me because to him it was easier for her to be let off now while it was still early than for us to continue to pursue a lie. I haven't spoken to any of them since except for the girl who now supports me, supports gays. She's actually really cool. And as time went on, other than the fact that some people bullied me even worse, and others came to respect me, I began to realize that it was not wrong for me to be who I was. I quit going to church. I quit going to this through this farce of trying to fix who I was. 
the hardest thing I had to do was come out to my father. I tried at 16. He wouldn't listen to me. Told me I needed psychiatric care. Threatened to take me up there. So I was silent. So I went to my stepmother and found some very unlikely support from her. It wasn't until a couple of years ago that I realized that her favorite cousin is also gay. And through her, she began to talk to my dad. And around the time I turned 18, my dad finally came to accept who I was. And since that time, our relationship has been better but still sketchy because he still finds it wrong. But he's educated himself. Ever since he got his Android phone, he spends a lot of time getting ebooks. And my stepmother came to me one night after my dad and I had, had an argument because he told me I wasn't allowed to see anybody while I lived with him. And I fought back, saying that it's not right for you to judge who I can and can't see, especially if I fell in love with somebody. I misjudged him. My stepmother came to me later and showed me exactly some of the books he had been reading on his phone, his audiobooks, and several of them were books on how to cope with having a gay member in the family and ways to support them. And I began to have a new respect for my, fa my father, because at least he's trying to accept me. Others are not so fortunate. I agree with your fight. I agree that we should be allowed to get married, not only for the legal reasons, but so that we can symbolize our love for our partners the way we're supposed to. To be able to adopt children without fear that someone will call CPS and they'll take them away from us, and also to support programs for gay parents to have natural children without having to go around the back, you know, like the back door and do it by unconventional means or have to pay insane amounts of money for it. We deserve that much at least. I'm sorry that it didn't come fast enough for you and your partner. For you to be able to say your closing words of goodbye at his funeral like you should have or that his parents couldn't come to realize that he loved you and you loved him. They just saw what you were. To them, you were an abomination. You forced their son to be that way. That's sad, and it's not fair to you. I hope that you'll allow this message to stay linked to your video so that others can hear it. And I would also talk to those who el who watch the video, mine and the publishers, to tell your own story, be it in the comment box below or through further video responses. Because if we all band together, we'll get what we want. I'm sorry for the length of my video, but I had a lot to say. This video has affected me that way. I hope that we all have a better future in 2012 than you did in 2011.